Hi everyone, and welcome to the 6th episode of the Matchbox Restoration series. In this episode I'll be restoring the 52B BRM racing car. The 52B model was introduced in 1965, replacing the 52A Maserati 4 CLT. One of my subscribers mentioned that, although the Matchbox model is found in both blue and red colors, the actual BRM cars never came in these colors. This particular model came without decals and was missing the driver and the steering wheel. Also the tires keep falling off the wheels because during the years the wheels have shrunk in size. All in all I have some work to do. Let's get started by mixing the color that will be used to repaint this model. I'm using a test sample of System 3 acrylic paint together with the Tamiya X28 thinner. To use this paint you have to make sure to mix it very well with the thinner to be sure there are no solid particles left in the mixture. I add drops of Tamiya X2 white acrylic paint to lighten the paint to the right color. To check if the color matches I apply small amounts of paint on the body. Eventually I find a nice match that resembles the original color. I put the model in my vise, slightly tilted because of the shape of the model. I first use a 3mm drill bit and then a 4mm one. I apply almost no pressure at all to make sure I don't drill away too much material. After the drilling is done, the base comes off easily. To remove the wheels and axles from the base, I'm using my Dremel tool to remove the small lip that holds the wheels in place. I always try to hold the wheels as far as possible away from the tool to avoid damaging the wheels. I sand the axles by holding some 400 grit emery paper around the axle while I rotate them with my drill. After applying the same technique to the tip of the axle, it looks as new again. The other axle has some rust on it, and because of that the wheel is stuck onto the axle. I put both in a bottle of vinegar to remove the rust so the wheel comes off. Next up is the base. It used to look nice and shiny, but over the years it got some wear. A couple of subscribers warned me about using the fiber pen, as it would be too abrasive to clean up the casting. That's why I'm using a steel wool Dremel tool. It actually gives me a better result with less scratches on the base. After cleaning, it looks much better. I have to clean up some of the smaller parts by hand because the tool can't reach them. I remove the paint with some paint stripper. Because the results with this paint stripper seem to differ time to time, I leave nothing up to the chance and apply a thick coat of paint stripper by submerging the model into the can. After 15 to 20 minutes I brush off the paint with a new toothbrush I got for Christmas. But I didn't like the color so I'm using it for my restorations. It makes the paint come off a lot better than my other, softer toothbrush and although it has metal brushes, it doesn't scratch the casting.
After paint stripping, I drill a hole into the rivet post, small steps at a time, to avoid breaking the drill in the process. I also make sure that the start of the hole is in the right place, so I don't run into the side of the rivet post when drilling deeper. It's time to apply the base coat to the model. I'm using the Tamiya White Surface Primer to make sure I can start the paint job with a nice smooth surface. While the paint dries, I'm putting the tires back onto the wheels. Over the years, the plastic of the wheels has shrunk, making the wheels fall off easily. I use a small piece of electrical tape, which I put over the wheels to make sure the tires stay on. I used this method because I wasn't too keen on using glue on the wheels and the tires. I received a lot of feedback on my paint job on my Pontiac GP Sports Coupe restoration video, which helped me a lot in looking into the issues I had. I took all advice to heart and tried different things to avoid ending up with a bad finish. I ordered some micro mesh pads after a subscriber gave me the advice to sand the model in between paint coats. But the main goal of course was to avoid having a bad finish in the first place. I ordered another compressor as well, to have better control over the air pressure I'm using while painting the model. Let's see how this turns out. From the first tests with my new compressor, it's clear that the small compressor I used previously only provided me about 10 psi. That explains why I had to apply a lot of light coats to get an even finish, thus increasing the chance of a grainy finish. After some tries, I commenced the paint job with 20 psi of air pressure. I start by painting a light color coat, followed by three wet coats until the paint looks even across the body. Even without applying a clear coat, I get a nicer finish than before. It also takes me about three or four coats now to get an even finish across the body. With my other compressor, I needed about five or six coats to get the same result. I secure the wheels on the axles by creating a small lip on the end of the axle with my drill press. I'll be using the number 5 decals for this model, as I'm unsure which number this particular model came in. There were also variations that had the number 3 decals applied, but these were less common. While the decals soak in the water, I apply some drops of water on the body. This gives me some extra time to fit them in the right spot when putting them on. Some tweezers and cotton buds, together with some patience, are basically all you need for this. After applying the decals, I put on a final coat of clear paint on the body. This will make the final result look even better. All that remains now is putting the model back together and fitting the new driver and steering wheel. These parts are also coming from model supplies in the UK. A quick cut and refining some small details is all that's needed to fit them in place. I secure the base onto the body with an M2 countersunk screw that I prepared to fit the rivet post. 
I removed the black anodization from the screw to match the silver plated base. And that's it. The BRM racing car is ready to hit the track again. I'm happy with how the base looks after the restoration. It used to look worn and flat, but with the right Dremel tool it now looks nice and shiny again. I would like to thank all people that gave me feedback on my previous videos, as this gives me the chance to improve my work. Please let me know what you think and hit the subscribe button to get notified when I'm uploading a new video. Also, keep your eye on the new community tab of my channel where I'll let you know what I'm working on. If you'd like to have some more exclusive insights and previews of my next restorations, please join me on my Patreon page. And as always, thank you for watching.